Good day, folks. Greg Budd from Bud's Bites here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. So in the initial video, <clears throat> we showed you how to foil this little Ripstick 100. In the following video, we're going to do the detailing, which is the hand etching with the ballpoint pen of the various scale patterns and whatever we put on, the inlay of foil and striping, and the facial details. Detailing, there's a lot of little hacks you can use, simple things, I think we've gone through the ballpoint pen already, inkless ballpoint pen, I use that for the striations and the scale detail, I also use it for the facial detail, 220 grit uh, water paper I use to get various textures on the lure, mainly for the gills, back to the pen for the fin, so I'm going to start with the eye detail, so on the eyes, basically using the ballpoint pen i just do minor circles i've got very efficient at this so i can do it very quickly now i'm actually lifting the pen from the paper each time so it's just doing circles although you can just do a doodle basically and it comes up pretty much the same thing so and it does get a very nice texture almost looking like a, a very very fine scale effect on the face And that's pretty much it. That's all we need there. Just again, tidy up areas if the foil is not quite sitting correctly. Characterize areas with sharp detail. Okay, now to the, the gill. And for that again, we're going to the 220. And we simply just apply it to the raised gill area. I don't want to do the whole gill. I want some to be natural foil. Apply it there and just press Pressing into all the areas you're covering on that top gill plate, and you get a nice little effect. What I do back that up with as well sometimes is a ball. I, this one is just on the end of my scalpel. You can use anything with a ball end though. And I give it a kind of uh, dimple effect. top of the texture from the sandpaper which actually once it's all clear coated looks quite effective As always look at your foil to see where there might be areas you can tidy up I'm, I'm looking here and I can see pen marks there I'm going to take my squeegee stick and I'm going to just get rid of those we can always tidy up I've always said it, go with the grain in these cases you can't but what I can do after I've got rid of them is I can just brush back on that. So that's looking a bit better there. I can see an area there. Well, that looks quite natural. Okay, so now we take a pen to the, the fins. And it's a very simple way of doing the fins, which again, look very effective. And that's just running lines down them. We've got to have a pretty steady hand, and but with practice, um, you can get quite good at it. And they're going to run quite parallel. I do it all freehand now. I used to use a ruler all the time. And quite easy to do. Of course, you want the, the fin striations to... <laughs> to be quite natural looking. So you start at one point at the top of the fin and you take them out at angles so it's arrayed like a fin would be. There we go. Now for the scale effect. Now the scale effect of, is what a lot of people have asked me to show them. Um, and a lot of uh, custom lure builders, they apply their scale before that they, they lay the foil. Um, I can't do it with the one, the thickness of the foil and the fact that I'm doing it around a curved body. Because now pressing the, the foil into the curves, you're going to lose the scale effect. So I do it afterwards. That's the way I've become accustomed to. And it's, by all accounts, um, quite effective. So all I do is I want to create the scale pattern. And what I do is I do cross lines or striations. One, lines going one way. Keep it, keeping them pretty straight and pretty parallel. 
um, and the same uh, with the pot um, is the way to go you can curve them slightly if you want you can make the scale bend around the body but hey let's just keep it simple for now and we'll do straight lines also bearing in mind different fish have different scale patterns or different shapes of scale so in, in, in this sort of scale fish uh, it's scale pattern which I'll tr try and simulate a sod or something like that a pilchard I will uh, do elongated scales so I'm going to do my lines that run probably at about 30 degrees I think and I'm going to do them about two three millimeters apart just running consecutively up and straight it's very hard to draw a straight line and foil but once you get used particularly around a curve but once you get used to it again it's quite easy and it doesn't have to take a long time as we get further down the body the the, the width of the lines can get a little bit uh, greater of course because the scale can get bigger doesn't matter if it doesn't because I can assure you that under paint no one really notices um, and the fish certainly don't notice okay. okay so now I'm going to continue that scale under the belly which is uh, very important on the same parallel and now taking all the scale under the belly you can spend a lot of time doing this but you don't have to they don't have to be exactly perfect you'll see with the end result and take it right under the chin but not necessary because these are all going to be painted over okay turning again I now get to these lines and I'm going to go a bit wider on the belly because the belly scales are normally a little bit bigger and I'm just going to run parallel lines all the way back a little bit of concentration required but to be honest, not that much. Okay, so that's one side done. Pretty parallel, pretty even. Starting to take shape. Behind the girl, let's press that down again. Now we're going the other way. Um, and as I say, they're going to be slightly elongated scales. So I'm not going to run them straight across each other. I'll always start from the middle with my first. And what you want to do is start from the bottom of the line where it meets a fin for instance and run it parallel up to the top that way you're going to get your scales all roughly the same size and you're going to get them running in lines so i'm going to start at the bottom of that run it up run it up run it up and i'll go to this side here Like so getting a little bit wider until we've got all the way to the back and we narrow it again a bit so we get our scales going smaller again I'll say it doesn't have to be perfect but near to perfect is good that's my dog drinking guys you'll meet my dogs eventually um, I've got a I'm kind of a cat lady but male with dogs I've got a whole pack of them I've had them for a long long time it's one family of dogs who are Kind of adopted many years ago and uh, they've stuck with me and traveled traveled extensively with me actually they've i've lived in victoria falls Bulawa, harare and they've been everywhere with me it's my family actually my boys and girls anyway so now we've completed with that and i'll try and get that in an angle so you can see it really looks quite effective but that's not where we end most Lure builders would be satisfied with just that cross hatching or striations giving a sort of diamond shaped scale pattern. I don't finish there. Uh, to give it a 3D effect, I put it back onto the scale. So, effectively, what I mean is I take each one of these scales and using the nib of the ballpoint pen, I circle the back and make that round 
on each scale. Yes, sounds like a lot of work, but it's worth the, the result. Um, and what I'm doing, you can see the way I'm holding the pen, I'm actually pushing the foil forward, which raises the back of the scale, which I'll show you when we've done a few, what sort of effect you get compared to just the, the striations. Could have a keen eye for this, or many eyes. I need to buy a new set after doing this for too long. So basically, with every single lure I, I do, this is the process that I've gone through. If it's a scaled lure, if it has a scale pattern on it, I've sat you with it, I've foiled it, and I've done this sort of intensive detail work on each lure. It takes me roughly, per lure, from foiling to the, uh, finishing the detail, roughly about an hour, hour 20 per lure. And that's without interruptions or rubbing the pouring tears out of your eyes because your eyes are watering or anything like that. So anywhere you see a lure of mine, if you buy one in New Zealand or Australia and you see that scale detail, you can rest assured that me, myself, I have sat behind it and I've been doing the actual detail myself. Which is why I think that... Um, my lures are popular uh, where, where they do sell overseas in New Zealand and Australia uh, in South Africa and guys are I wouldn't, I'd love to say queuing up to get them but um, almost only problem with that it does keep me busy and to make it a scalable business and one, one worth uh, money or earning you a living you do have to find processes that are quicker on this so that's why I've employed guys to help with the assembly the shaping the sanding so I can focus purely on the detailing I'm going to try and show you guys something now uh, which the half scale effect so I've only done half of it versus just the striations and you can see the difference in the in the 3d I don't know if the camera will pick that up so if you notice here on the area where we've just done striations, which is what a lot of guys do, and I'm, I'm not knocking it at all, it's very effective. I just find it gives it a bit more of a realistic feel if you do the curve on the back of the scale with a ballpoint pen, trying to push the foil up, and you do get that 3D effect. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but from here I can quite clearly see a dimple in each scale and the back of each scale raised, which looks very effective, particularly when I apply my paint process. Okay, so we're nearly there guys. The, 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 the good thing about foil is it's very forgiving, so you've got to remember that if you do make a mistake, if you don't adhere to the line, you get a double line, but you'll find the pen, the ball of the pen will follow the line anyway, and if you just curve the lure and turn it slightly, it's quite easy. If you do make a mistake, like that for instance, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but I've actually not stayed within the striation, the line there, very easy to get your stick and just rub it out with the grain again just rub it out you might have to go over a few lines but there we go it's gone so i just look in the light chair again see what lines i have to go over again and they're all rectified so you can make mistakes they can be erased interesting story about this lure though is how it came into being is obviously a lot of my initial stick baits were, were bigger 145s, 165s. And though guys were catching fish on them, um, they found off Melbourne in Australia that the, the bluefin tuna were very finicky, often feeding on white bait, which is one of the colors I do, and small bait fish um, at different levels in the water column. So what they wanted, they wanted a, a small lure for giant fish that could be presented among balls of bait fish and look more natural and possibly entice the fish more because it's a more match the hatch sort of thing um, and guys to all my knowledge and the reports I get back from Australia have been doing quite well on the bluefin they've also been used actually all over the world well in Mozambique I know of in Mauritius um, 
And a little story I've got about the uh, original prototype. I'd, I'd made the original prototype and then obviously made my, my jigs and tooling to get the shapes, the shaped wood out. And um, a friend of mine and someone who tests a lot of my lures is a guide off Mozambique. His name is Bruce Cook. Um, he came and he had asked if he could use one. The only one I had was the prototype. So I gave it to him, asking him to be very, very careful with it. But of course on his next, next trip to Mozambique, I think the first fish he, he encountered, which he, to his knowledge, he thinks it was a big GT, it kind of engulfed the lure and reefed him straight away. So there went the prototype. Normally what I'll do with my prototypes, I'll keep each initial one. This was one. This was the initial Kickstick 165s. It's changed a bit actually. But as you'll see, I'll mark my name under the epoxy and put number one on them. And those will just be kept here by me, so I've got something to refer to. Um, back to the little 100 ripstick. Uh, the, the gentleman who is my partner in Australia by the name of Justin Church, it was he and I who conceived this and then came up with the idea. Um, and yeah, it works very well. We'll get some swim video eventually and we'll show you guys exactly what this can do. As the name implies, ripstick, it can be ripped with an aggressive sweep of the rod and the tail kicks out and it acts like a pan bait fish or it can be retrieved straight to the rod tip in a constant retrieve and it actually swims. It will actually give a nice sideways wobble and swim like a fish, pretty much like a Rapala but without a bib. And that's all because of the weighting and the buoyancy, the disparity that's caused between the weighting, where the weight is and the buoyancy in the back. Which is why I like to use light but hardwoods as well, which I use mainly Jelutong or American Poplar. But there we have, there's the finished product. All ready to go. So from here, once I've finished this, this will join the, the line of lures on my hangers there. And what we'll do is we'll clear coat. Now I've got a way of doing that in order to get rid of the foil seams. And that's just using a 2K auto clear coat over the foil after a very thorough cleansing process. Because what you find is you might get some sort of delamination uh, where the 2K or the clear coat, whatever it might be, doesn't adhere to the foil. Foil is very hard to, to um, apply anything to, um, but certainly paint, which is why you have to clear coat it first. Two reasons. So you can apply the paint and also so you can get rid of the edges of the foil. Once that's dried, after I've applied the 2K clear, it also seals the eye and everything else, as I then sand it back with a thousand grit water paper, and you get rid of all those seams entirely on the belly and on the back, ready for paint.